Hello everyone, and welcome back to another co-op episode with me and Marcus Aurelius. How's it going, Marcus? Going really well. How are you? I'm doing great. It's it's always fun to play this game co-op. I think it's the best way to play the game, actually. Yeah, it's a think? lot of fun. Um, and we are going to try and finish out Marcus's campaign here on the uh, War Mage difficulty. We're on the map Corridors, correct? That's correct. All right. Well, are you ready to just jump in then? Yep. Okay, let's do this. Let's go some more, more orcs. The more the merrier. I played a little bit of the nightmare mode, and I think nightmare is basically the amount of orcs and stuff that you get in co-op, from what I've noticed. Okay, is this just me, or does this look like a really simple map? Um, Like, there's just one entrance and the, one... Uh, there is just the one interest down there, but after that, there's two in the opposite side of the map. So if you follow um, my character in the back, there's actually two more doors in these back hallways. So they're going to come from that long hallway first, and I think even flyers come from that way as well. But then back here, you're going to have a door that way, and these monsters are going to come through here. And then the door on the other end, and they're going to come through here. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I made the same mistake. I was like, wow, just one door. And then I kind of got surprised by the other two. And and they want to get to this. All right, so, okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to get to the, the glowy rift thing. All right. You know, I don't even know if I have enough slots for all my traps. I'm so used to having so many more. Okay, I'm going to Scepter Domination, Stone Staff, yes, Acid Sprayer. Mm. Mm. No, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave that behind for today. I may have to. I may actually have to leave the bone amulet behind. I just want to make sure I equip the. Ah, oh, here we go. The guardian trinket. And yeah, the paladins. Okay. Yep. Um. The ice definitely want the swinging mace. Shoot. Damn, I really wanted to use the bone amulet, but I just don't think it's going to be a good choice. Yeah, it's, it's it stinks that they only limit you to six. Well, in this level, I guess they only limit you to six traps. Okay. Um, well, I think I have what I'm going with. All right. Actually, why am I trapping the um, the one they're not coming <laughs> out of? Uh, they, they will eventually come from there. I know, but not just but yeah, right just, now. Just not right now. What's Is there anything up this side passage? That's basically where you can just kind of put archers, because flyers do come from the top area, too. So I usually put archers on the sides to just shoot them down. But All right. Don't fall in the lava. Right now. Oh, excellent. Well, I guess I could use them. All right. Yeah, I guess I'll use them. Shoot. All right. Well, I'm out of money, but I, they're going to freeze in the front, so I'm good to go. I'm still setting up my uh, archers here. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Hopefully that extra ram will make a difference on my performance. I hope so. Have you noticed any lag in this first wave? No, but it, it generally takes a while. Like, it's halfway through the video when it really starts. Uh, be careful up top. We do have some flyers that can hit us. Oh. I didn't even notice them. Wow. They're in the north hall. It's actually been a while since I've used the stone staff. I forgot how, how cool it is. I've been doing a lot with the um, the crossbow and like the warhammer lately. Cool. I love the spinner. You know the spinner is kind of worth worthless in this in this one. Oh shoot! Uh, the spinner can be used in the back hallways. They're not coming from there yet, though, right? Not yet. I think it's the next wave or maybe the wave after. All right, I'll 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 go set that one up after this wave. 
Well, these flyers suck. But I guess once you have more archers set up, it'll be easier. Yeah, I'll probably put some more archers back here as well. Oh, shit. I kind of forgot just how many orcs come in this mode. <laughs> oh, these guys are the worst, man. Yeah. These damn elementals. But you can turn them to stone, even though they are stone. <laughs> Which still doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Alright. I don't see the um, back doors glowing, so I guess they're not coming from back there yet. Okay, if you say so. No, we need we need some paladins. More flyers. I wish there was a way you can command your archers just to focus on them and leave the ground troops to us. Yeah, that I have thought the same thing. So I'm like, damn it, archers, don't worry about the orcs. I got the orcs, just worry about the flyers. <laughs> nice. Oh. A paladin has fallen. No, not yet. Oh, here comes a uh, troll. I hate those guys. Well, you got him. There it is. Alright, new door is opening. Wow, you run a lot faster than I do. Are you holding down shift? Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's how you run. Of course, now I'm getting caught and... <laughs> okay. Okay. You look good right there. Okay. And more paladins. I'm gonna put up some slowy tar traps right there. Okay. Right. Are they coming out of both or just this one? Just this one for this one. Next okay. Wave. And then I think next wave is gonna be the other one. I don't so know. The, uh, the dart is like a poison or acid damage? Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, I forget which one I chose. Either stuns them or charms them. But oh, like I, a charm? Yeah, but I really expected to do more damage. So, uh, traps are kind of disappointing, it seems. Which they should be better than us, but we're much more capable than, than traps. If you can unlock these floor scorchers, they are pretty good. <laughs> Especially when you get just like multiple rows of them. They, they do a pretty good job. Yeah, it does seem like they're doing really well. Maybe I just don't have enough skulls to get the really good stuff. Alright, yep, the other side is now opened. Wonderful. They're breaking through! All right. Maybe I'm just not positioning it well. The dart spinners? Yeah, maybe I should put it like up here. Maybe we have more range and get more guys. I may just see more of them. And I think. The towers that you get for free that you don't have to pay to unlock, they are probably weaker than the ones you do have to pay for. You know what I, I'm saying? I paid for the spinner. Oh, you paid for the spinners? Yeah. Oh, either, wow. That's a tower either, that I just get for free. Either that or I paid to upgrade them. I forget. Where are they coming from? I think they're coming from all sides now. Oh, good. Paladin here.
Yeah, your your fire tiles are really making it happen here. <laughs> A roasted orc is the best orc. <laughs> The only downside is that those large elemental guys aren't, um, I think I have a resistance to fire. Either that or just immune. Do you still have one? Oh, I see. It's one of those guys. Okay. Okay. They're probably going to start coming from all three sides now, I think. Probably more archers would be a good way to spend the money. Yeah, yeah, let me do that. Because I think we can handle them in the, in the tight corridors. It's just here with the air guys that it's tough. Okay. Oh, the damn gnolls. I hate them. Have, have you seen any of the gnolls that throw grenades yet? No. Oh, man. Oh, air. Oh, you're coming from this far to the middle, guys. I hate them. Wow, they're really attacking this with full force. Whew. Oh, now they're starting to come from... Oh, Over yep. Here. Oh, great. Okay. What? What's well, up? No, if you got that side, then I'll keep, keep on this side. Oh, okay. I was just laying down traps. Uh-oh. And watching orcs just roast. <laughs> nice. All right. That's pretty easy. Only four more waves to go. Okay. Oh, I get it. You can't run and shoot at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing they do to keep you from being in shift the whole time. So far, so good, by the way, on the, um, the lag. Oh, yeah, that hasn't kicked in yet. Oh, shoot, there. I've been um, meaning to ask if you've been playing anything other than uh, Dominions lately. Do you mean playing or or recording? <laughs> just just playing. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been playing um, a little bit more of the Banner Saga, which I enjoy. I don't want to record it, but I enjoy playing it. And um, Avadon, the RPG from Spiderweb Software. I really like those. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've only gotten about an hour or two into that one. How is that? How far have you gotten? I think I'm about halfway done. I'm enjoying it. Oh, shit. Wow. Now, I did a little research on the Spider Software games, and a lot of people say that 
like a lot of their games are basically the same thing, just a little different story? Is that Yeah, is that I right? mean, the, the mechanics and the visuals are the same. They're based on the same... Well, I mean, depending on if the series, like the, all the Avernum games are based on the same world, so you see a lot of the same locations. But, you know, it's a completely new story, completely new plot. But, I mean, th those, those criticisms are true to the most part. If, okay. but, if, but if you enjoy the games, then you'll enjoy them. If you, if you don't, then you don't, I guess. And I um, I just enjoy them. And Abaddon, the new series, is completely a new franchise, so it, it it's completely different and it feels different. Yeah, the couple hours I played seemed really fun. I like the combat. Yeah, it's I haven't got, really gotten too far into the story yet, though. It's got good base, good turn-based tactical combat that um, requires a little bit of skill, but not like so much. Not like Dark Souls levels where you're just like pulling your hair out <laughs> dude i love me some dark souls though i can't wait for the second one's coming out pretty soon did you know that they're by the way they released some uh just change completely change the subject they released some age of wonders 3 videos to show you the rogue class and it looks pretty awesome oh really yeah where you can like i was gonna ask you um that's coming out in march is that right that's what they said but we'll see games never come out and when they even when they do come out they're like all buggy and you have to wait another month for them to patch everything and make oh. them playable don't I know it? Speaking of, uh, I heard that there was a new patch for that Rome game, Rome 2. Oh, yeah? And the general feeling is that Rome is almost where it should have been when it was released. <laughs> <laughs> the game's been out for, for like five months, and it's gone through nine patches, like nine major patches. And people are like, yeah, it's basically where it should have been five months ago. Oh, wow. I am. Um... So I'm. Huh? Go ahead. I was just gonna say I'm thinking about maybe jumping back into it and see if if it is actually where it should be or not. Yeah, I, I, myself. it deserves, especially because I paid for it. It deserves more <laughs> of my time. Uh, you know, I'm not going to uh, record it, but I, I definitely should spend some more time playing it. I, what I really want, and I heard some people talk about this on the Steam forums. I'm like, yeah, I completely agree with you. Is um, Byzantine Total War, which like it takes place in the time period between Rome and medieval where it's like kind of the fall of Rome and the and then the Byzantines trying to survive against like the Persians and the barbarian tribes that sounds like an awesome time period and they haven't done that time period yet oh I was like is there like a, a, a mod that does this or something no no so I was it's just, not actually yeah just a time there. period that they haven't done kind of between medieval okay. and Rome oh that would be cool and and for the people that are watching at least that watch my videos no I'm a really big fan of the Byzantine Empire you actually kind of inspired me. Um, I didn't do any recording of it, but I started playing Europa Universalis a little bit. And yeah. I did a couple test runs on seeing if I could do Byzantine in that game, because they start in a pretty precarious situation, uh, surrounded by the Ottomans. It's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. Yeah. I, I wasn't able to do it, because there are guides out there that... and But the thing is, the way that the guides get around it is kind of cheesy to me. And I want to always try to find ways that people don't think of doing things. Um, Unfortunately, though, all my tries at it failed horribly. So well, maybe there is only like one actual strategy to get out of the early game for them and that uh, in Europa. I was kind of thinking that since I'm having so much fun with this uh, Dominions 4 Pythium Byzantine Let's Play, that I would just start doing a running series where at any given time I'm playing a game that has to do with the Byzantine Empire, whether that be like Broken Crescent, the mod for Medieval 2, or... Europa Universalis, or really any game that features the the Byzantine Empire. Uh, so that's kind of something I've been throwing around. This is the first time I've actually said anything about it in recording form, but I've been thinking about it for a while. That's kind of funny, because I was going to try to do something with the uh, Romans at all times, because my Skyrim series I did, that was about 100 so episodes, was um, the big thing was a Roman mod, and now I'm thinking about if Rome 2 is fun, I may actually do a Roman you know, gameplay of the Roman campaign. Yeah, I mean that's the one I, thing. I didn't, huh? I was gonna say that's the one thing that kept me in Skyrim was that the, the empire were or, or the the imperials were kind of like the Romans, and so I felt like I yeah. was basically playing a, Roman RPG. And th there's a a mod I don't know if you saw it or not, but it actually replaces all the imperial, weapons and armors with actual like Roman armor and stuff. So it looks, really cool. It really makes it a lot more enjoyable. Nice. But I didn't know there was a Byzantine mod for Medieval 2. Well, it's 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 not Byzantine. It's called Broken Crescent, and it's a mod that focuses in the same time period as regular Medieval 2, but it focuses on the Islamic factions. It goes all the way to India, 
But it just so happens oh. the Byzantines are on the far western border of it. Okay. So they're just one of the factions. And they, they, there's some really great stuff in there. There's this faction called the Gaznavids, which have really great, like, spearmen. And just being able to... And there's Indian factions with elephants, which are really awesome. So I'm assuming it adds a lot more to the campaign map, or just yeah. has factions? Yeah, no, okay. the campaign map starts at Constantinople. It's like the westernmost part, and then it goes all the way east to most of India. Okay. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. The only time I've ever even played in India in a Total War game would be, um... Oh, what was that one? Empire? The, the Napoleon, yeah, Empire. Oh, Napoleon, yeah. Uh, that game, I, I wanted so much. I wanted so much for it to be good, and it just... It's just <laughs> I, could, I could never get into it. I mean regular Empire right now. Um, yeah. I tried playing the Austrians a few times, and I was just horribly disappointed each time. I didn't enjoy that much. I heard Napoleon was a lot better. But I never actually bought it. Although I'm... Maybe I'm just getting old. Because I they haven't released a game yet that's been as good, in my opinion, as Medieval 2. Dude. No, I, I don't think you get old. I think that's just a fact. Medieval 2 was amazing. And it seems like they've just downgraded and taken away features ever since. I don't know why. Because, like, the whole... The trait system for all your all of your leaders, and if you marry them with specific people, you can get a child with their traits, and it's like that alone is awesome, and has never been in another Total War game, or if, if it has, it's been really simplified. And it just it was an awesome game. Medieval Two was amazing. I just felt like it was more strategic because in in Rome Two, for example, y you have to have a leader, and that leader has an army assigned to him, and you can't just have a unit hanging out somewhere. There's, there's garrisons that come with the city, depending on how big the city is, and then you have armies that go with your leaders, but you don't... It, whereas in Medieval 2, you could be strategic. You could put half an army in a city to defend it, while another half goes and does something with a, with a leader oh. or two leaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just felt like I had a little bit more control over what was going on. Um, yeah, the whole, you have to have a general for every single army stack is... I don't know, maybe it's... I, I don't Well, you probably know more about the history than I do. I, does that seem more historically accurate to pick everybody in general? Well, I mean, I guess. Every every army out there had some kind of leader. But, it, I mean, were they all necessarily, like, amazing strategists? Probably not. They were just the Emperor's brother or whatever. You know, somebody he could trust. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, even in Shokan, they still allowed you to just have multiple stacks without generals running around. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure... In real life, there wasn't like 15 different mini armies. They were probably <laughs> it was probably in their best interest to keep everybody together as one fighting force. But I'm yeah. just saying, from a strategic perspective, I enjoyed it because you have you have a full control over what to do with your your units. But then again, in Dominions, you can't move troops around without a commander. Of course, commanders are cheap and plentiful, and you can have thousands of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can have a lot. I've been stockpiling cash here. It's probably a bad idea. Let's put some traps. Yeah, I, I have a lot. I mean, the thing is, we don't really need any more traps, I think. Kind of got this handled, but... Let's put down some more. That is a lot of frozen traps right there, by the way. <laughs> well, orcs aren't going to get through. I've also been thinking about going into the Lord of the Rings mod for Medieval. I've seen gameplay of that a lot over the past couple of years. It looks interesting. Have you ever played it? Oh, I love it. I've played it all kinds. Um, but I hear it's really difficult to, to vi record because there's so much copyright violation. Oh, that's a good point. So you have to make sure that like the music is turned off. And um, if you want to see somebody who does a really good job with it, look at Surreal Beliefs. He's done a few campaigns, and they're all fantastic. Yeah, he's I doing... think he's the one that I've always watched. Yeah. But that, that does look like a cool mod, but yeah, I didn't even think about the whole copyright stuff. Yeah, I... I, I get a little hairy. I took control of the world as the High Elves and as Dale. Um, both of those Dale? were really fun. <laughs> yeah, Dale. I enjoyed Dale. They have really... They have guys with, like, two-handed attacks. Um, I mean, a sword in each hand. They have yeah. axemen. And they, they have a lot of stuff. It's just, it's hard to believe in the world of, you know, Middle-earth that Dale rises up to 
take you out, everybody. But Welcome. I mean, that's what Total War is all about. Yeah, it did in my game. One faction that I really wanted to love but couldn't is the um, the Sylvan Elves because th their, their unit roster was just so basic. Like there was only like a few different units. The Sylvans, those are the uh, Legolas guys, that's, right? Yeah, that's Legolas. But they, in the in the game without additional mods, if they combine that with um, Lothlorien, so it's a combination of Lothlorien and Legolas's father, uh, Thranduil, or whatever. Okay. Is there a, a Hobbit faction? Um, there's a faction called Ariador, which allows you to recruit Hobbits, and you could also upgrade them later on in the game to Arnor, which is like the northern Gondor kingdom once you have enough provinces and things. You can change the faction to, yeah. to Arnor? So, so yeah, if you, wow. if you conquer certain provinces and you build certain buildings, you can change the faction. That sounds like Europa Universalis stuff right there. It's Changing the, the country and stuff. It's fun. So press ready to continue. Where's... I just went to the uh, campaign menu. How long How long have we been doing this? That's a good question. I didn't... Uh, I did not see the time when we started, but I think it's going been going for about 20 minutes, maybe 25. We might want to... The thing is... I, I'm going to have to get going here soon, actually. But um, Yeah, we might want to call it an episode. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our little talk about Lord of the Rings um, mods for Total War. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, this game is still fun. Uh, this is still kind of easy. I, I still want to see what uh, co-op is like in Nightmare Mode, so hopefully we'll get to that eventually. Yeah. So thanks for watching, everybody, and have a good one. Take care, everybody.